Alrighty, how's it going gamers? Daybreaker Rain here, coming at you through a video scope with another entry into the one-shot series. And guess what? I finally got my webcam situated. So I actually have my green screen pitched back up so I could actually have me included in the uh, in the gameplay now. So I'm actually really excited about that. I, I, I'm glad that I can finally do that because I really enjoyed actually doing that. Uh, for a lot of my videos. So today in the one shot series, we are looking at Williams Arcade's greatest hits. Um, we were going to originally play the Sega Saturn version of this, but unfortunately I couldn't get it to work. So this is actually going to be the PlayStation 1 version. Um, so we're going to be looking at that and we're going to check out these awesome cinematics that they did back in the day because that's supposed to be the Defender ship that's flying around. I was always dumb, like amazed by this this kind of stuff, like in PS1 games when stuff like this showed up. To me, it was always just like a crazy thing because you know, like before, I mean, the, the, there was never anything like that in um, games before. So okay, so this collection has Defender, Defender 2, Sinistar, Robotron, Joust 1, and Bubbles. So we're gonna kind of just. I guess do a little bit of each, uh, try to in any case, uh, but we're going to start with Robotron because that's a game that I've actually had a hankering for quite a bit to play. Um, thankfully we don't actually have to go back to the menu like that, we can actually run each game from being within another game, so that actually kind of works out. I don't re really remember the control. Okay. okay, so this one's kind of interesting because, in, you know, this was before analog support was kind of like a thing. So, the fire buttons are all on the face buttons. So, you hold two buttons to shoot diagonally, and then each of the face buttons will shoot uh, left, right, up, or down. Uh, thankfully, this was resolved when Midway's Arcades, uh, with, with Midway Arcades, Arcade Treasures, Midway Arcade Treasures, I believe it's called, uh, when that was released, uh, thankfully that was resolved because the Xbox version had uh, dual joystick support, so you actually had two joysticks as opposed to face buttons. I don't actually know how it was in the original Robotron Arcade. Um, the only time I've ever seen one was that the local Target had one for a bit, for some really weird reason, had a Robotron arcade machine. Um, that's the only time I've ever actually seen one. I never got to play it, though, so I don't really remember it from the top of my head. Uh, but I do think it might have had two joysticks, or it might have just been exactly like how I'm playing it now, or with face buttons as opposed to joysticks. It's kind of really important that you that you save the humans because they, they help you score and you want to get extra lives as fast as you can. They give you a big score because you combo as you pick them up. And I'm not doing too well. <laughs> it's always one of the levels that I always end up losing all my lives on. Oddly enough, you know, my, my dad was really freaking good at Robotron. And of course, you know, for the for those who just want to like get as far as they possibly can and just want to, you know, goof around, you don't actually have to play with the with the default setting settings. I think you can edit each of the settings in the game and give yourself like uh, a crap ton of extra lives. Ah, jeez, I think I got like one more extra life. We're about four minutes in, so I don't know if I'm gonna be doing a run of each. Uh, I might not be doing a run depending on. Uh, I was thinking about maybe doing two runs a piece, see how far I could get, but uh, since we're already like four minutes in, that might not be happening considering uh, all of these episodes. The one-shot series I like to try to keep at the 20 minute mark, uh, you know, because again, it's just, it's just one episode, like I'm not going to be revisiting uh, this game on the channel. Oh jeez, as soon as I spawned in. Okay, well that's fine. Gotta love that old school uh, sound effects. <laughs> oh, 
Alrighty, so we're gonna go ahead and shoot to another game. Let's check out Joust. I haven't played Joust in a minute. Uh, these these games, I again, I had the Saturn version of this, so I used to play this a, a whole crap ton. I mean, so I got really... I didn't necessarily get really good at these games, but I did enjoy playing them quite a bit. So I have kind of that... As I, as I say that, and I'm already come in dying. Um, I did enjoy playing these quite a bit when I was a kid. So I, I'm glad I, gr I grew that appreciation for classic arcade games. Because uh, it's just one of those things. Like, I, I, I didn't ever want to... Uh, not have that appreciation like there are just some like you know mo most uh, and i'm not saying i well i can't speak for every single kid on the planet but you know most kids nowadays they don't grow up with these you know these older titles they grow up with what modern tech t is today so they either grow up with like the xbox one the ps4 and the pc um you know and so they, they don't really I don't know how many how many you know parents from the older generations are, are showing these kids uh, you know showing kids nowadays these older games you know what they were before you know we had the technology that we do today. I know that there, I know that there's like those like react videos and crap like that with like oh kids reacting to cartridge based systems. Um, and, and to me, I just feel a lot of that shit's fabricated, so... I mean, it, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. If a, if a kid is truly dumbfounded that, that that's how we, you know, did back in the day, you know, I get that. Um, I mean, to an extent, oh my god, I ran right into him. I think I do be better at balloon fight. <laughs> But I think everybody can do better at Balloon Fight because those are all pre-established levels. So, like, after you start playing those first couple levels a few times, you're going to know... Oh, hell. Uh, you're going to know where all the uh, enemies are. They spawn randomly here. Well, if he didn't kill me, the freaking Pterodactyl is going to kill me. That's how they got around having a timer. So, when you spend too much time trying to fight the enemies, uh, this pterodactyl shows up, and he's a freaking pain in the ass to kill, you, you can kill him, it is possible, it's just you have to, you have to get your jousting rod right in the center of his mouth, and it's kind of a pain, it's a more of a pain than he actually, than it actually looks, so, ah, ah damn it, thy game is over. Okay, I think that's enough of that one. Uh, we're already eight minutes in, so if we're spending like four minutes a piece on each of these, we'll probably we'll probably be done by the time we get to <laughs> by the time we get to the last game. So we'll try out Defender now. Defender's uh, def Defender was actually always one of my favorites. Um, it's kind of funny because Defender Defender One. Uh, came out in arcades, but Defender 2 as well came out in arcades. But I think Defender 2 is the only one that got an NES port. I don't think Defender the Defender 1 did. Okay. Oh, shit. I'm already, already fucking up because I'm launching my smart bombs. Okay, so the whole point, as you could probably take a guess by the name, is, is that you've got these little humans down here uh, just chilling on, these, on the terrain. And you've got to shoot down the alien ships uh, whilst uh, trying to save the humans from abduction. The first couple levels are pretty easy, but then it gets super difficult because you start they start introducing new enemy types. So you'll get the traditional flying saucers eventually that'll show up that are a lot faster and a lot e like a lot harder to kill, and I'm. And that's always kind of a problem, is, is that that's a lot of the a lot of the times why I die. <laughs> okay, well we're gonna we're gonna do w one more time. Defender 2 is I mean there's really not much to show with Defender 2. I I think they updated the graphics, like the ship looks different, uh, your shots look different. Uh oh, uh oh, no, no, no. 
Oh, dang, he freaking no scoped my ass. <laughs> he freaking got me good. Like, that was just like perfect timing. Freaking save the human. Oh, shit. Yeah, and you do have to be careful because if the humans, uh, the humans will die from a, from a high distance. And at least it does. But if it's the last human, uh, you actually, you actually don't have to worry about that. Oh, shit. Yeah, I forgot that that's what happens when you blow those up. They become freaking little. Well, those humans are rip. <laughs> okay. Let's... I don't even know why I'm bothering with the name type in, but whatever. <laughs> it's like, um, you know, back back in the day, like when you had people like living with you and stuff like that, it was easy to like compete for scores and everything like that, but. It's kind of like a moot point now because it's not like this is an online capable game, you know. All right, so we'll take a quick look at Defender 2. Uh, again, like I said, there's really not much to comment on with Defender 2 other than it's just the same game with the updates. Yeah, so like your ship's different. Uh, I think you get more enemy types in the beginning. Oh, and then they that they did include that. You can now warp around the map. You have certain like wormholes where you can warp around the map. The uh, the aliens. Oh man, there were there were two humans that got taken. Yeah, yeah. And once the humans get taken, they uh, turn into they turn into the ship. So. And I'm not doing a too good job. Yeah, the explosion's different. Like, they updated things here and there. They didn't really, like... Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot the freaking... You can actually, like, make volcanoes happen. And, yes, those can kill you. I, I forgot about that. I really did. So they updated a lot of the stuff, but they kept a lot of the same noises and everything, so there's really not a whole lot to show there. Okay. Okay, yeah, like I said, not really a whole lot different. I mean, it's the same, same concept, same game, more or less. It's just updated in several different regards. So I guess you could say it's kind of like a better version. Or if anything, it's like an expansion to the first one, if, if you will. Uh, some of the graphics and stuff changed. So now we're going to look at Sinistar. Which this game, um, I would think, uh, has some... Uh, notoriety i mean if you're not familiar with like a lot of arcade games i think this one would be the one that some people would be familiar with so the objective is is of course you've got to kill sinistar uh but you can't do that with just a normal laser so oh damn uh they are currently building sinistar um and you have to uh shoot these asteroids to get the bombs that you need to kill sinistar um Most of the time, I don't make it past the first level. Because <laughs> it, it is kind of hard. You have to have a specific amount of bombs to be able to kill Sinistar. And you don't really get a whole lot of time if you're not paying attention to these mining robots that are taking pieces to him. And you have to be careful because there's the, the mining robots don't fire back. But um, the little saucers there, of course, do. And he will.
will let you know when he's ready. And then he will Beware chase you. So you kind of have to still collect bombs, but it's kind of a pain in the ass too because now you got that big motherfucker chasing you. Uh, he does show up on the map at least, you know, so you kind of get an idea of where he's at. Um, but trying to like have map awareness while you're like paying attention to, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, and that's typically what happens. I am not very good at Sinistar. <laughs> as much as I, as much as I wish I was, I am not. I'm super not good. Okay, so I'm just DB. I'm just Daybreaker this time, because apparently there's a time limit. Okay, um, so we'll go ahead and look at the last game, Bubbles. Bubbles. I used to be pretty, pretty. <laughs> Bubbles. I used to be pretty good at. Um, so pretty pretty simple concept so you've got like all this like stuff in the sink and so the idea is is that you collect all of it um, you can collect this little old lady and that's how you kill the bigger bugs you, you use the broom that she gives you but you have to look out for several stuff like these uh, like these scrub brushes, you have razor blades that show up in various locations, these giant bugs that show up. Uh, when you get big enough, the scrub brushes, to, you're, you're not worried too much about the scrub brushes though, because... But of course, I am now big enough to where I'm actually able to go ahead and head to the exit for the level, but you can also pick up all the enemies, if you will, and clear the level the same way if you want. This game's, a, this game's probably a lot easier to, um, kind of get, kind of get familiar with, I guess, uh, in a sense, because it's not hard to really pick up and play. It's a really simple concept, not, not too complicated. So I'd definitely say, uh, this one and probably Robotron are probably easier in, in some aspects. Okay. Oh, that's right, and then when the, uh, that's right, I forget you skip a level when, when that happens. Uh, when you go into the drain as opposed to just clearing the level normally. And I think I hit the razor blade. I don't know what the hell just happened there, there was a lot of noise going on. Alright, so we're gonna go ahead and type that in. So yeah, pretty fun game. I, I That was probably one of my favorites on this whole collection. I, I used to play that one probably the most out of all of them, because I wasn't really good at any of the other ones. Um, so uh, we got a little bit more time, so I'm gonna go back to Robotron and give it one more, well, one more go, I guess. <laughs> this is the word I'm looking for. Uh, and then we will wrap up this uh, one-shot video. So... Just one more time and see how far we can get. See if we can get a little bit farther. I was actually doing not too bad until I spawned in and I freaking immediately died. <laughs> it's funny that, um, you know, Midway Arcade Treasures came out on several different formats, and there was a PSP port of Midway Arcade Treasures. Um, that unfortunately didn't have this. The only version of Midway Arcade uh, that had Robotron in a portable format was the Game Boy Advance version. It's kind of weird that of all versions that the Game Boy Advance was the one that got it. And as you can probably imagine, it's it's kind of difficult to play Robotron on the Game Boy Advance. Not gonna lie. I mean, you only do, well, I mean, you do have the four buttons, but it is kind of, like, pretty complicated as opposed to how this is. Oh, dang, man. <laughs> okay, so I, I guess I didn't, I guess I didn't do as well as I thought I was going to. Um, and I promise I wasn't intentionally playing bad. I know some, some YouTubers like to do that. 
Anyways, guys, I think that's going to be it for me today. So I want to go ahead and thank everybody who stopped by and checks out this video. Uh, this was just kind of like, it, it wasn't necessarily an off-the-cuff sort of thing, but I really wanted to revisit Robotron, so I figured um, this was a good way to do it, and this was a uh, good episode that we could uh, crank out and check out. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to be doing next week, uh, so just stay tuned as always because you never know what's going to pop up on the One Shot series. So as always, guys, this has been Daybreaker Rain, and I will catch you all in the next one. Take it easy, guys, and it feels really good to do that again. <laughs>